how a lot of French nuns escaped France to the safety of England and then obviously I mean obviously we got at the uh, in the English Channel you got a, a port called Christchurch so let's say presumably they headed the uh, all the nuns escaping all the persecution the religious wars to um, Christchurch and then obviously uh, my sighting of these nuns above the tree lines was at Halton Heath I got <laughs> I got loads of pictures so so if any uh, news journalist or TV wants to check that out I've got loads of pictures anyway I'm a ufologist so I don't usually I see a few UFOs but I don't see I don't see nuns going across the uh, tree line above a tree line so so I was probably a few miles away and I was looking um, I was seeing all these strange lights come down and eventually through my Nikon cameras you can see there are nuns. It's it's unbelievable. There is anyway. There's a nunnery. There is an actual nunnery near um, Halton Heath. Um, so, which is a clue, but it's got no. I've, I've been looking and looking, seeing what faith it is, what order is it? Catholic? Is it Protestant? Um, anyway, I've come up. There's um there's another name that's come up to light I was unaware of there's a uh, a faith called Camelite Camelite I mean, let's just make sure and it started uh, near uh, it started in Palestine up Mount Sinai on this mountain so anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna read it off right this is uh, what happens so I'm gonna read this off while the sun sets and uh, yeah so the Carmelite order began around the start of the um, 13th century uh, when a small group of Western pilgrims settled in Mount Carmel. And that's obviously in Palestine. Um, they lived a simple life um, of simple um, prayer and manual labour and they followed a rule of formula of a formula for life given to them by Saint Albert of Jerusalem. So Saint Albert of Jerusalem gave them a a form of a way to live. So anyway, what happened from there? When the uh, when the situation in Palestine became unstable, the hermits moved um, back to Europe. So they obviously were in Europe, then went to Palestine. And uh, they adapted a new way of life and conditions, adopting the lifestyle of um, interrent preaching, um, adopted a lifestyle of, um, yeah, just preaching. And they, a lot of them become friars and Francescans. So obviously this is like an offshoot of the Catholics. Um, women, yeah, so women too were attracted to the Carmelite values of prayer and the community silence and, and solitude. At first they gathered in a small informal communities, uh, but from 1452 they were allowed to form proper monasteries and were allowed to form and become official, uh, yeah, become official uh, members of the community. And they started their a order, started their order called Carmelite. So anyway, in 1535, Saint Teresa of Avila, I'm not that, oh yeah, it's in Spain. So Avila entered one of the monasteries in Spain. The community had grown large and Teresa recognised that some of the original Carmelite ideals had become lost. In 1562, she established a new house of just 13 nuns, although this was uh, later increased to 21. Um, they, were, they were to live as a small community of friends entirely dedicated to prayer and silence and solitude. 
So over the next 20 years, Teresa founded another 16 of these monasteries. She visited them regularly and she wrote several books outlining our understanding of prayer and how the nuns should live. Right, hang on a sec guys. Yeah, so the mountain at the centre of the faith represents Mount Carmel and the original home of the order. It is sometimes topped with a cross representing Christ and the goal of our spiritual journey. The three stars have been uh, variously interpreted as to represent Christ, Mary and Elijah, or Mary and two, uh, two prophets, Elijah and Elisha. Other interpretations suggest that the two stars at the top of the um, symbolises Mary and Elijah, while the other star still ascending. The mountain stands for Carmelites still journeying to God. The crown above the shield symbolises um, the kingdom of God, from which emerges the fiery sword of Elijah, who burnt with the zeal for God. His statement, Zello zealous sum pro domino dio esse situm. I can't, that's obviously like Latin. Um, if I quickly swing this down, so I'm reading this off. The sun's still setting, so let's go back on the other phone. Uh, so the crown above the shield symbolises the kingdom of God from which emerges the fiery sword of Elijah who burnt with zeal for God. Um, his statement, Zello zealous sum pro domino dio exitum. I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts as surrounds the shields. Um, Finally, the 12 stars surrounding the shield represent the queenship of Mary as envisioned in the book of Revelations 12, 12 1. A woman clothed with the sun and on her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, I've I, I just done this on the whim, so it's uh, as the sun sets, guys, so... So, yeah, yeah, I've never heard of the Carmelites. So obviously, I'm a Cather, and um, yeah, so this is quite interesting. This is very interesting, and um, so I thought I'd get this out here, but obviously, I'm trying to still solve. So at Halton Heath, there was there was nuns moving across the tr tree, and similar to the sun, so they were in like like burning sun, they were nuns figures moving across the treetops at Horton Heath. And uh, so anyway, basically, I think it was after 10 o'clock, these orbs or something came down. And next thing, I was taking photographs and the bit um, film footage of all these nuns moving across the tree line at Horton Heath. So I'm, a, I'm in Hampshire, near the Basingstoke Canal. So... Um, I certainly go back there. So if any ufologists or even any religious people. Um, so, yeah, so I've posted it on my YouTube channel, which is Live Streams Recordings UK. And also I've posted it on TikTok, some of the uh, videos.